Hi everyone, I hope you're all well and having a great day. Lee here, aka Osiris, and welcome to what is a brand new adventure of content here on the channel, covering all of the news as it does drop, our thoughts, hopes, and everything to do with the new Pokemon Sword and Pokemon Shield games before they are released later this year. Now, I'm normally known on the channel for covering a lot of competitive content, but at the heart of things, because I will be continuing to pursue that, I am a gamer and a huge Pokemon fan, so this is something that I've wanted to do for the longest time so finally to be able to do this sort of content is very exciting and I really hope you do enjoy it as we go forward. Now with that in mind if there are any topics or things that you'd like to see me discuss on the channel please leave the comments in the comment section below and I will make sure to try and feature as many of them as feasibly possible as we go forward and as always if you do enjoy this content before we jump into the episode today please remember to leave a like on the video, subscribe to the channel for even more Pokemon content and also leave Leave those comments in the comment section because I love at the end of the day nothing more than hearing from you guys and just interacting with you, hearing your thoughts in particular on the new games and what you're really looking forward to. So without further ado, let's get into today's episode. So to kick us off in today's episode, what we're going to do is just briefly talk about my thoughts on that reveal trailer that we got from Nintendo a few weeks ago, revealing the Pokemon Sword and Shield games with a bunch of game footage along with that. We had the announcement of the region's name, which is the Gala region. It is based on the UK, which is really exciting, especially for myself, summer I've grown up in, you know, and always playing Pokemon games since I've been like... I don't know, tiny, tiny. One of the things that I always wished for was having a Pokemon game based on a place where I grew up, obviously the UK, and to now finally have it just as that extra layer of anticipation for these games. And I can't really wait to explore and see the references to the UK in these games and how Pokemon have portrayed them through the Generation 8 titles. One of the other things we got was the starter Pokemon, which is a really nice touch from Nintendo, you know, revealing some Pokemon, but you know, the starter ones as well, which are kind of like the same signature Pokemon for most of the titles. They're the ones that everyone remembers. Which Pokemon did you choose to start with? That's always the way it goes, isn't it? So having the start Pokemon revealed was really nice. And we had Bunny, we had Brookie, and my little favorite, Swobble here, who I will be picking. So it'd be really nice to hear your thoughts. Everyone's been going crazy about what team they're on and what starter Pokemon they'd like to be picking. So do let me know in the comment section what which starter you prefer out of all of them. But I tell you one thing about the starter Pokemon that is very exciting is just thinking about and theorying what their evolution lines could be and we'll probably do a separate video altogether on that because I've got some crazy ideas about what Swabble could turn into and what it could potentially be and what I'd like to see it turn into but you know that's for another video, we'll get into that a bit later. But the game footage, as I say, is beautiful. We got the starter Pokemon, the Galar region. We had the gyms coming back. We've had that announcement, so gyms will be returning in the Pokemon Sword and Shield games, which is just incredible. But what I wanted to do in this episode today was something a little bit different to what a lot of other the Pokertubers have done. You know, they've made some incredible content out there already on these games because we're a little bit late after the announcement, getting started with this content. I wanted to do a little twist on this video to start us off today. Day and I wanted to do the top five things I would like to see personally featured in these new games when they do drop later this year. So we'll get into it right now from the bottom to the top with number five. So the first thing I would love to see as featured in these new Pokemon games is customizable Pokeballs. Ever since I played Gold, Silver and Crystal, visited Kurt with my Epricon and he turned them into these unique Pokeballs that were different to Pokeball, Great Ball, Ultra Ball and Master Ball. It was just incredible to be able to have these different Pokeballs and ever since then I've been had this real attachment to them and what better way for us to go into the Generation 8 than having this extended into a little bit step further where we can actually customize customize them ourselves and put our own unique kind of identity on them as trainers and then even trade them to other Pokemon trainers so they can use them in their games and know that you've got Osiris's Pokeball and you've got this Snorlax in it because it's a custom Snorlax Pokeball where we've customized it around Snorlax's colors. We put little ears on it maybe, little stripes on it. Anything like that would be incredible just to take us a little step further into this customization feature that we could potentially have in Pokeballs and take it that little step further where I think a lot of people would really enjoy that. I know I personally would spend a lot of time doing this with Pokeballs and they all have their little added effect so maybe we can even tweak them to a certain extent as well 
well to say where if we customize it around a particular Pokemon if we use it on that Pokemon it means we've got an increased catch rate on that Pokemon making it easier to obtain it would be incredible to do and I think it would be a really nice extension into the customization and really making things quite unique for yourselves as trainers in these new Pokemon games getting on to the next one is going to be DLC content we are now moving for the first time from these Pokemon games on a handheld system to a home console system where we've got access to that DLC content which is just incredible and very exciting at the same time so the thing that I would love to see as featured in these new generation of Pokemon games is DLC content featuring previous regions added to these new games so say six months down the line after Pokemon Sword and Shield have been released Pokemon announced that they are giving us a DLC of Johto you can go back to the Johto region and do all of the gyms there battle red on Mount Silver catch Pokemon from the Johto region and just explore that land I think it would make the Pokemon games in general that bit more closer to an open world situation that everyone's really dying to play and have an experience of if you can add that DLC content to this and create that Pokemon world you know all of the previous regions we can go back and visit all of them I think it would be an incredible feature for Pokemon to be able to expand on and do within these new generation of games seeing as they've got this facility for the first time ever it will be a lot of work but I mean Nintendo they would make the cash wouldn't they from doing this and I personally I'd be one person that would be open to buying this content because going back to the previous regions and exploring these games again would be absolutely incredible and it would take away a lot of the features about people clamoring and craving these remakes because you know we're due Pokemon Diamond and Pearl if we're going in chronological order of remakes but what's to say that they can't be just a DLC added to this game so we can go back to that previous region and explore and have that experience that we had from those previous games years ago but we go back current day to the the time that we're set in the Galar region and we explore it again all fresh and new and still have that nostalgia from that region but can experience it again Again, with just current time I think that would be a really nice feature and it is something that they're gonna have access to so hopefully we see them expand upon that going into these new generations let's get into number three number three is quite an interesting one and a little bit of a far hope for myself because I don't know if this will happen but it would be an incredible thing to see featured within these new games and it will be an alternative to the Elite Four now all of the previous Pokemon games even the Alola region in Sun and Moon we had an Elite Four and I just feel like now is a good time to remodel that whole idea why can't we collect all our gym badges like we see Ash do in the anime and then go to a Pokemon League where we enter a tournament style Pokemon League where we battle off in a group stage then we have knockout stage and we try to get crowned as that Pokemon champion that would be something incredible to see and then maybe we go and battle the Elite Four after that in a, a post game situation and then start up our own gym or something like that along those lines I just really don't like the platform of re continually repeating the Elite Four it gets very boring and I think doing this we've seen stadiums announced in these new Pokemon games we saw in the footage we saw a trainer walking into a stadium what's to say that we can't have a very big league situation where once we've collected all the gym badges around the Galar region we go to an actual Pokemon League we in a tournament style setting and pit our wits against all these different trainers we've seen it in past Pokemon games you know Pokemon Stadium Pokemon Stadium 2 we had league situations where you could go through all of these different knockout rounds where you fight different trainers to get to the top and then you have to try and win the title that way and we could still have our rival as the final person that we have to defeat in this road to the championship but I just think a different route to the the standard boring Elite Four that we'd normally see and I know there's probably a lot of you out there that really enjoy the Elite Four getting to it but I just feel like now it's to the point where I've personally played so many Pokemon games I'd love to see just a little revamp on this end bit of the game before we we finish it up with just battling these four random trainers that we've not really seen throughout the whole Pokemon game or seen sporadically and then they just sprung onto us like these immense 
Pokemon trainers that you kind of can overcome quite easily at the end of the game. I think a tournament style setting would be something incredible to see going into these new generations and it would be something fresh I think that would throw all the excitement together to kind of encapsulate the end of these new generations. So that is one of the things I would like to see. Getting on to number two. We kind of touched on this in our last one where we said we'd like a different end to the game. We wouldn't like Elite Four, maybe have a Pokemon Championships, a proper Pokemon League Championship championships like we see in the anime like we saw Ash do in the anime series over and over again where he goes to that tournament at the end of the season and one of the things I would like to do which links into number two is if you become the Pokemon champion why not go back to your hometown there is never a gym in your hometown where you start your adventure why not go back to your hometown and start your own gym or at least have the option to go and start your own gym and then you can go around the region and recruit your gym members so they're there to be the the, the counter measure before someone can battle yourself and then you know create your own gym badge create your own unique typing for that gym I think it would be an incredible feature for these new generation games coming out and a real unique a kind of customization goes back to the pokeballs doesn't it but having these extra game add-ons at the end of this game once you've done the elite four if that is the thing which it probably will be or you've done the the pokemon league which we hope it will be then you can start your own gym in your own hometown because it's all there it's perfect you know the situation is there all you need is the facilities to be able to do it. and I think the aspects of going out and recruiting trainers that you've seen throughout the gameplay as you've played through it and say oh I battled you is there an option here for me to say can you come and be a gym member of my gym crew that would be incredible and then once you've built your gym you can take your gym online and have other players come and challenge your gym for your unique gym badge and then they can take it away and add it to their trainer card I think it would be a really nice aspect to these games and something I would love to see added in the Generation 8 games. Let me know what your thoughts are though on your unique gym. If you would start a gym, what would it be and what would you and who would you recruit if you had the option to, obviously. Getting on to our top one though, this is my all-time favourite want for these new games and I think it would be incredible. So number one, the one thing I would love to see over everything else going into these new generations and this is coming from a competitive standpoint is rental Pokemon for the online battle spot facility. I think the one thing that really holds Pokemon back in a competitive standpoint right now is the accessibility to just hop on and just introductory level to play the games because you can't just hop on and play. You need to play through the game you need to catch your Pokemon you need to breed your Pokemon level them up EV them the list goes on and on and on and on and on and the hours are clocking up and this is just too much for some people to do whereas if you've got a rental system online where you can just pick any Pokemon and EV them specifically give them any combination of moves at all that you want obviously they've got to learn them then just hop on the battle spot and play and test this team out I think this would be in an incredible feature for us to have going into these new New generations and really open the door up to a lot of people into the competitive scene and just into the franchise of battling in general because one of the things that I think you could do as well to stop people just being a bit lazy and not take a big part of the game away is have an aspect where you can use these rental Pokemon online and use them to practice with but then if you're going to an official tournament then you have to breed that Pokemon yourself you have to breed that whole team yourself so you've still got the aspect of being able to go away but you're not wasting your time breeding a team that may not work in competition I think this is a feature that I would love to see and would really open the access doors to a lot of Pokemon trainers out there getting into the competitive scene which is really fun and a really great environment and also it would just make battling online a lot easier for a lot of people there are a lot of online competitions where you have to get certain you have to play so many matches to get certain unique Pokemon and giveaways and things like that and this would be a way to get around that and make it accessible for people just to hop on and have a good time with a team you know that they don't have to spend hours making where they can just go in have a bit of fun and then come out and think I really, really like that team I think and it does work and I had a lot of success with it so I can okay what were the aspects of it I've got it saved let's go away and catch these Pokemon breed them and train them up to be 
exactly like this rental team. I think that would be an amazing step forward for Pokemon and it would still keep relevant the, the core concept of the game of catching, breeding and training up your own Pokemon as well. It just opens the door up a bit more accessibility wise and having almost like a battle simulator available to us as trainers to utilize going forward. So there we have it. I hope you enjoyed all of these things that I've discussed in today's episode and let me know what your top five hopes would be going into the new Sword and Shield games later this year. Let me know your thoughts on the ideas that I've had and maybe if you disagree with me or you really like an idea, let me know and we can expand and discuss it down in the comment section below. But I hope you've enjoyed this first installment of our Sword and Shield episodes and as soon as any news does drop we will be featuring that and making sure to cover anything on the channel and discussing it. One thing that I'd like to do with this series is stay away from leaks or any rumour information. I want to keep this all quite relevant to news that's dropping on the channel and just discussing things and potential things that we could hope for rather than saying that this is definitely stuff that could happen or might happen or there is a leak there. So we'll try and keep it quite concise and make it a lot of fun along the way because I am so excited for these new games. I cannot wait for them and I hope you are too. So thank you so much for tuning in guys. I'll see you for the next one. Until then take care of yourselves and bye bye.